Welcome to class number four, session number four. This session will focus on the use of monolayer capped metal nanoparticles as chemoresistors. The chemoresistor term is a combination of two words, chemical and resistance, which relates actually to the electrical resistance. The working principle of a chemoresistor that is based on molecularly modified metal nanoparticles is as follows. Metallic electrodes are connected to a voltage source and molecularly modified metal nanoparticles are assembled between the electrodes. In this configuration, the organic legions are responsible for the absorption of analytes and the nanoparticles are responsible for conducting the electrical current from one electrode to the other electrode. When voltage is supplied to the system, changes in the electrical properties due to absorption of analytes can be monitored. In general, the change in the resistance of the nanoparticle films can be described using an activated tunneling model seen in the upper equation where R denotes resistivity of the chemoresistor, beta denotes tunneling decay constant or in other words the electronic coupling coefficient, the Latin letter delta denotes the edge-to-edge -edge separation between metal cores, EA denotes activation energy for charge transport, KB denotes the Boltzmann's constant, and T denotes the absolute temperature. The first exponential term in the equation is an expression for the tunneling of changes between neighboring nanoparticles and accounts for the experimentally observed exponential dependence of the resistance on edge-to-edge -edge separation between adjacent nanoparticles. The second exponential term considers the thermal activation of carrier's transport. This term is based on empirical Arrhenius dependence of the temperature and experimental values for the activation energy value agree well with the classical Coulomb charging energy that are required for the transfer of an electron from one electrically neutral particle to the next something that is indeed is expressed in the second lower equation. In this equation, the letter E is the electronic charge and the letter epsilon R is the dielectric constant of the surrounding medium and epsilon zero is the permittivity of the space uh, and R is the particle radius. Interaction of the nanoparticles film with analytes can have two counteracting effects. The first effect is that the film swelling, which may increase the resistance due to an increase in the interparticle tunnel distance. The second effect is an increase in the permittivity of the organic matrix around the metal cores that may decrease the resistance due to a decrease in the activation energy, EA, and due to the reduction of the potential barriers between the metal cores, which in turn decreases the tunneling decay constant that is denoted by the letter beta. In the following slides, we will discuss the parameters that affect the sensing mechanism. We will start with the effect of the chain length of the capping legions. In chemoresistors that are based on molecularly modified metal nanoparticles, the chain length of the capping legion has a critical effect in the sensing properties of the sensors. In the presented experiment or results, three different groups of capping molecules were tested. Alkanthiols, brushed alkanthiols, and aromatic thiols. As seen in the left figure, molecules with backbone structure have different effect in the baseline resistance of the nanoparticle-based chemoresistor. 
Additionally, it can be easily seen that the higher or the longer the chain length of any studied category of the legions, the higher is the baseline resistance. This makes the average distance between the nanoparticles larger and therefore the baseline resistance of the chemoresistor is also higher. The effect of the chain length of the legions on the nanoparticle based sensors is shown in the presented figure in the current slide. As seen in the figure, for a specific analyte or vapor, the sensitivity is higher for longer chains. This might be attributed to the spatious nanoparticles so that more molecules are able to adsorb on the surface. Also from the figure, there is another observation and that is that nonpolar analyzes stimulate a positive response while polar analytes, mainly those contain the hydroxyl groups, stimulate a negative response. The reasons for these differences will be discussed in the next slides. In the meanwhile, another parameter that have a critical effect on the sensing results of the nanoparticle-based sensors relates to the film's morphology. While an extensive research in this context is still under examinations, we might roughly divide the morphology effect throughout three different scenarios. In the first scenario, the nanoparticle-based chemoresistor contain only a small number of nanoparticles as illustrated in the appear image on the screen. Of course, this happens with no percolation pathway connected between the electrodes. In this case, there is no direct linkage between the adjacent nanoparticles, and therefore, no current passes throughout the nanoparticles or from one electrode to the other electrode. The result is very high resistance and raw response to analytes. In the second scenario, some islands of nanoparticles are created, but no direct linkage between them occurs. This is illustrated actually in the middle image on the screen. In this case, a response to an analyte causes swelling of the islands and induces smaller distance between the nanoparticle islands. As a result, the measured resistance after the analyte's exposure is decreased. Finally, in the third scenario, a percolation pathway exists in the nanoparticle film, and in this case, exposing the film to analytes cause swelling of the nanoparticles film, and as a result, lead to an increase in the electrical signal. In a few instances, the analytes might stimulate aggregation of the nanoparticle films and as a result lead to a decrease in the electrical resistance. One example for the effect of the swelling mechanism in the nanoparticle-based sensors is presented on the current slide. The presented example deals with the use of molecularly modified nanoparticles for sensing the pH levels in water. It was found that indication of the pH level can be achieved by monitoring the swelling, also the shrinking, of responsive ultra-thin polymer brushes by means of the absorption of gold nanoparticles that are attached to a specific substrate. As seen in the bottom figure, when the pH was changed from 5 to 2, the polymer brush swelled to a thickness three times the original thickness, namely from 8.1 nanometer to around 24 nanometers in thickness. This change shifts the absorption peak as seen in the image as well. So far, the swelling mechanism can be tailored and controlled according to the targeted application. 
One way to do so is by adding a linker between the adjacent nanoparticles, which basically bind adjacent nanoparticles by chemical bonds from both sides of the linker. In the presented case, the interparticle structure is defined by a combination of capping and linking molecules. The function of the linking molecule is to create highly ordered, covalently bonded film of nanoparticles. This molecule contributes to the order of the nanoparticles, which is important for the performance of a, a chemoresistor, but on the other hand, might be an anchor for swelling mechanism. The rough relationship between the linker properties and the sensing properties are described in the next slide. In this slide, you can see that in general, the interparticle chain length dependence of the response characteristics obtained with a chemoresistor array of nanoparticles display a sigmoidal feature. When the capping molecule is smaller than the linker molecule, it seems that swelling mechanism is anchored by the linker and therefore the responses of these chemoresistors are relatively small. When the linker is of similar length to that of the capping molecule, the response of the chemoresistor depends linearly on the linker's length. Finally, when the linker is longer than the capping molecule, then the responses had no dependency on the linker length. While this is a reasonable explanation, this explanation relies on a limited number of analytes and have to further validate it with a wide range of analytes. Now we will move to an interesting parameter for sensing application of chemoresistors that are based on nanoparticles. As such interesting parameter that affect the sensing results of the nanoparticle based chemoresistors is the particle shape. In films that are basically based on spherical nanoparticles, there are voids between the adjacent nanoparticles even when they are organized in a body-centered cubic or BCC assembly. In this case, when the analytes are adsorbed in the voids, there will be no change in the chemoresistor response unless they exceed a threshold concentration in the voids. Replacing the spherical shape of the nanoparticles with the cubic shapes provide nanoparticle film with much lesser and smaller voids between the adjacent nanoparticles as seen in the right TAM image on the screen. In this case, analytes that adsorb in the nanoparticles film create an immediate changes in the medium between the cubic nanoparticles much before they reach the concentration threshold that characterize the spherical nanoparticles. This means that at low concentration of analytes, it's better to use cubic nanoparticles for the detection of the analytes as compared to spherical nanoparticles that are used for the same detection as well as for the same analytes. One example of the relevancy of these claims is shown on the screen. In most cases, the response of the chemoresistor that is based on cubic nanoparticles is dramatically higher than the response of the chemoresistor that are based on the spherical nanoparticles that have similar characteristic dimensions. An interesting observation in this figure is that the response of the cubic nanoparticle films towards Ondikan has both fast response in the first few seconds of the exposure and also it has slow response afterwards. The reason for this observation would be explained as follows. Ondikan is a relatively large molecule. Therefore, in the first few seconds, the Ondikan diffuse into defects 
that exist in the cubic nanoparticle films and induce sensing charges. However, when these defects are saturated, the undi can start to diffuse into the smaller voids that exist in the same film. In this case, the diffusion process takes time to fill the voids between the nanoparticles and therefore a slow response is observed quite clearly. As a support for the relevancy of this explanation, the discussed effect becomes much smaller for shorter molecules like octane and ethanol as also presented in the same figure on the screen. In conclusion, the control of all the uh, properties of the chemoresistors can be used as a tool to tune a chemoresistor for specific sensing needs. It's a quite simple to control features like the type of capping legion on the nanoparticles, the length of the capping molecule which will determine the spacing between the nanoparticles. Also, it's quite easy to control the morphology of the nanoparticle films in the chemoresistors devices and also it's quite easy and reasonable to control the shape of the nanoparticles of the chemoresistive film. With this, we come now to the end of class number four, session number four. Thank you.